All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the chaos community or wait, no chaos common. Oh, uh, it's great to see everybody. Great to see new faces as well. So thanks for joining us. Um, so I think this first part of it uh, with respect to Gary, I think we'll just kind of hold off on that for just a second so that he can kind of uh, take a look at that and talk about it. Um, one of the things that had come up was um, with respect to the governance document that, so I'm already on this section, the governance document that um, Don had put together a little while ago, asking all of the working groups to just think about who the chairs are for the working group so that it can, um, just so it's, it's, it's clearly stated who the chairs are for the group and that each working group kind of reflects on it. I went and take, took a look at the uh, common readme file and right now it's Kevin and myself, which seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, Don is too okay, I assume. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's all that was listed there. So like I said, that seems all right to me. Does anybody have questions or comments about that? All right. I think the the ask. Oh, sorry, was there a comment? I, I would say if we have folks from Asia Pacific or one of the new regions that we're we're expanding our, our chapters to, that we may include additional co-chairs. But for now, two is good. Okay. Um, so the request is for each of the kind of coming out of common for each of the working groups to reflect on who those chairs are and do updates as needed to your readme files just to reflect that. And Don, were we going to, and Elizabeth, were we going to have kind of a single document that lists everybody? Was that the plan or no? No, we have a document that lists um, all of the working groups, but mm -hmm. we thought it was probably better just to have the um, chairs defined in the working group repositories or whatever whatever place the working group does their work so they don't have to update it two places. And okay. so that it's in the place where they see it more often because realistically people will never go to that, that other doc unless they're looking right. for something specific. So it'll get out of date if we have it separate. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. All right, the next thing is I brought this up in, this came up in the DEI uh, working group meeting yesterday. And there was a request to kind of define the roles for chaos liaisons. And so for chaos liaisons, um, Jen, you're here trying to kind of specify what this is. And so for those of you that are not familiar with chaos liaisons, the idea here is that we have three uh, chaos context groups and those chaos context groups are corporate OSPOs, uh, university open source program offices, as well as scientific software communities. And we could, yeah. Um, and as part of that, as part of those context groups, we're asking for conversations to occur that uh, would be around things like what are the metrics and metrics models that are useful and meaningful in a corporate OSPO setting? Or what are the metrics and metrics models that are useful and constructive in a university OSPO setting? And within each one of these context groups, we're trying to abstract the uh, kind of the mechanics of the chaos project so that within those, those two week, every two week meetings, um, and maybe even on Slack, the, the discussions can be fairly high level and, and flowing such that the participants in those meetings don't have to worry about how to say create a metric or how to create and publish a metric model kind of the, the details that go into that. But based on those discussions within those context groups, there are oftentimes where th new metrics and new metrics models are actually candidates for development. 
And the development of those metrics and metrics models will typically occur here in common, or it will occur in the metrics model meeting that we have um, also every other week. So the liaisons liaise between these context groups that kind of talk at a higher level about the things that are important to them. And then the common and metrics model working groups that get a little bit more into the details of how to actually create and publish metrics and metrics models. So the liaisons are meant to kind of bridge that. So what the request was, was to kind of define what a liaison would be responsible for in this role. And so the link is in the minutes and here it is here. So the first section was just to define the meeting expectations of the meeting attendance for each of the liaisons. And really what it comes down to, a lot of this is kind of the preamble that I had just talked about. It comes down to um, attending the chaos context group to which you are the liaison. And I think every one of them is on a two week cadence. So that would be two times per month. Attending at least one common work group meeting, which is this one, at least once a month, the first meeting of the month, and then likewise, one metrics model meeting, uh, the first of the month, at least once a month. So the request is for four meetings per year. And a number of the, the liaison, or a number of the context groups have more than one liaison. So I think coverage should be um, provided by those two people pr pretty easily across those four meetings. Uh, and then joining the respective Slack channels. So for the respective context group, and then this Slack channel, as well as the metrics model Slack channel. Does anybody have any questions on kind of that part for the liaison, what, what, what the role is and what the meeting expectation is? Silence is good. All right. The next is kind of what the expectations are from a development perspective. So the hope is, is that the liaison can not only bring the metrics or metrics models that are discussed in the context working groups, the, again, the corporate OSPO, scientific software, or university OSPO, but kind of bring those to these meetings, the common and metric model meetings, and kind of present what the, the model is. Um, and what the thinking was from that context group behind the model or the metric. Um, Basically translating from the domain to chaos to explain yep. it. Yep, exactly. So bringing it to this group. Um, that would probably also include kind of um, using the chaos templates that we have to put the model, you know, kind of in, in a document form that we could speak against and sharing that with the common working group or the metrics model working group. Um, and we do have the templates and they're, I think they're pretty straightforward to follow. Um, it may also include some of these questions like trying to understand who the audience for the metric or the metric model is, um, where the data for the metric or metric model could be drawn, just helping us yet yeah, translate um, between the two. Um, and then as we work here in, say, the common working group or the metric model working group to start kind of articulating this metric or metric model, then also bring it back to the respective context working group to, to say, here's, here's where it's at. Here's what we're thinking. Here's how we understood this metric or metric model um, and kind of iterate on, you know, the motivation wasn't quite clear or the audience isn't quite clear whatever needs to be iterated on. And again, bring it back here to this group and we can continue to, to advance that metric and metric model. So that's the intention of the work. Um, does that make sense? Good. All right. Um, and then I did have this last thing. I don't know that this is terribly relevant. Elizabeth, you may speak to this because like publishing the metrics and metrics models at that point when the metric is like done from this group and kind of done from the context group, I actually kind of feel it's just handed off to like you or Kevin for publication. Is that right? Yeah, um, I'm thinking maybe there's uh, like maybe they could just open an issue and link to the Google okay. Doc and that will indicate to me or Kevin that 
we need to do something with that. Okay. If that's okay. And where would it, where would that issue be in the website? It, uh, no, I would put it in the repo where the metric was. Well, I don't know. Common, I guess. Or maybe the repo where it was brought up. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe common. Maybe just common. Okay. Or metric model. Yeah, because it'll we'll have to put it somewhere. Like it'll and have to live in a working group somewhere. So tag you perhaps on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm thinking like, so how will I know what working group to put it in? I guess is my question. So if it was, it came from, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why not put it in the working group that it was liaised from? Because then at least there's some confidence of mm -hmm. where it came from. <laughs> yeah, so if it was, if the idea came up in DEI, for instance, then yeah, put it in the DEI. And then I know where to, it can live. Yeah, it, uh, it, there's some context that comes from just putting it back in that working group, the liaising yeah. and the manufacturing process. It's like uh, ordering a Build-A-Bear, it still gets delivered back to the DEI group. Yeah. And we'll put a little heart in the metric. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that way I don't have to search through the spreadsheet to try to find it where, where it okay. is. So yeah, okay. perfect. Um, but I, I think maybe the, so the issue, I like that. Um, and then the other is a lot of our metrics and metrics models, they start as Google Docs. And so we can provide access to the respective folders that a liaison would need. I think the biggest thing is that when the, that came up in the DEI meeting is that when the, the um, Google Doc is done and we're transitioning it over to a markdown file, that we also transfer ownership of the Google Doc. Actually, come to think of it though, once we have it in GitHub in markdown form, do we need the Google Doc anymore? Remember, even on the spreadsheet. Yeah, I think the issue is it, it, it's almost like from the beginning it should be owned by Chaos because while it's being developed, where all the work is happening, that's yeah. I think that's where we <clears throat> ran into problems before was that it never did get published. Not so. at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was like we tried to go back in and work on it and <clears throat> we couldn't get to the doc anymore. So all that work was lost. Okay. So maybe oops. If if it's doable, um, because I did this with Gary, um, like someone who does have access to the chaos uh, Gmail could just open a doc, a blank doc even for that person and then yep. say, here it is. What do you think? So well. I can put this up here. So wait, say that again. So, so like instead of them starting the doc, somebody with the G chaos Gmail would start the doc in the drive and then just they could just work from that doc. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it never, <clears throat> sorry. So it always is in chaos. Or it's just an extra step for one of us, but yeah, it's not too difficult. Have a new Google Doc created mm -hmm. that is owned. And maybe maybe that's where the issue starts or something. Like that's how they indicate they need a Google Doc set up. And then when that's ready, then they can use that same issue to to indicate that it's ready for publication. Just a thought. Okay. So like open a new indicating that. Google Doc. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. And then um they can they can tag me or yeah, they can tag me or something. Okay. And Jen agrees. She's like one issue for the whole Yeah, and then we'll just as soon as the, all the work then is done in that doc, then they can say just go back to the issue and say, yeah, it's ready prior issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I think maybe the biggest thing to think about, it seems like, is like where to put that issue. Yeah, and 
I do like the working group where it came from. Just somebody will need to tag somebody. <laughs> so you'll just need to tag me or somebody so that it doesn't get buried because I don't watch every single repo, I don't think. Maybe I do. I don't know. But like, you it's not as crazy. This could sound crazy in retro, but given how we're doing this across multiple different working groups, what about recreating the metrics repository? Like bring that back? Yeah, because then we all know where to go to look for metrics and we don't have to decode where it came from. I do like that idea. I feel like that will be a, a project. If we do move everything into that repo, that will take some work. We could uh, we could do a phase out kind of a thing where you know we're selling our old inventory of cabbage patch dolls for the new model, and over time it would just become. So one one problem with sourcing it is I think this came up maybe in a conversation I was having earlier today is that. Um, the university context group doesn't have a repo. We can we can create so, a repo. They, or we could just start them in the metrics repo. Start them where? Start their metrics in the metrics repo. No, I understand. Since yeah. Two different ideas here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the university, the context working groups aren't aren't intended to, to uh, develop metrics, right? So the metrics happen in one of the metrics working groups. Each of the metrics working groups does have their own repository. So it feels like creating, bringing back the metrics repository would possibly create more work and confusion than, than the issue we're trying to solve. I, I feel like that might make it worse because it'd be hard to find, like I, I can look at common and see the metrics that I care about from the common working group. But if they're all kind of mixed together in one metrics working group, I think it makes it harder to keep track of things. So That's maybe point. it makes it easier for us, but not for them. Yeah. Maybe this is common or metrics models. Like it just it just it just yeah. starts here is what or or DEI, because that's the other one that develops metrics. Yeah. We don't the only problem with DEI is we don't ask the liaisons to attend. that mm -hmm. okay okay um we can kind of sort this out i think too as it goes forward <laughs> what seems to be best and we can move issues if we need to if we're like that's a terrible place for the issue to live all right. Um, great. I appreciate the feedback on this. Um, I will share this, I think, with the people who have expressed interest in being a liaison. I think I know who it is. Well, just I dropped sure. the list. Sorry, I dropped the list in the in the minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, wasn't there somebody else who had an interest in university as well? Elizabeth. Oh, right. I grabbed this from old. I think, Yiga, was that you? I believe so. We, we, I think it's just in the DEI. Yes, it was. Yes, okay. it was. I was trying to unmute myself. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we'll add you here then. Okay. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, I see Gary. I'm here and embarrassed. I volunteered to moderate and then I was like, it's at 12, right? And then Elizabeth pinged me and I was like, oh, okay. It's all right. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, uh, thanks for, thanks for, uh, coming back to it. So <laughs> I have four models that form a supermodel, um, that we have talked about in a couple of working groups and I understand I should bring it here to talk about it a little more formally as like, does this fit as a metrics model or not? Um, there was a bunch of feedback that I have gone through um, from various folks. I know um, some of the folks in this call have had a read through and some grammar checking and some commentary 
uh, Eric Sorensen, um, notably also, uh, gave me some of his input. So I guess, um, what do these need or what should I be doing to kind of move them forward or kind of like, do they need more discussion? I guess I, I don't know what the process would be other than I've already published them and had them reviewed a couple of times. Oh, I missed the bottom there, obviously. What's that strategy? Yeah. I'm coming in. Yeah, it was a lot of uh, rephrasing and grammar. Um, do you want us to take just a second and how about this? Is there one that maybe you think requires a little bit more reflection still? Because we could take some time right now to take a look at it. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with most all of these because of how long I've been passing them around and asking for feedback and showing them. Um, I, yeah. That's how I'm feeling about it. We, we can poke through them if that's what you'd like to do. Um, or maybe if you're pretty comfortable with them, maybe you could. OK, so this is the overall like meta metric module is viability, project viability. Right. And the intention of that is to um, kind of understand how a project um, is like long-term viable for an organization is that right yes so this is coming in from the perspective of a user of these uh okay. open source projects yeah would i consider this viable based on the community of a project based on the compliance and security of a project based on the governance of a project and based on the strategy of a project gotcha okay And so those are then further broken down and yep. they share some metrics between each one of those pieces. But the uh, first draft that I did where I found what was the most relevant wound up being something like 20 metrics. And so then I broke it down into more categories. Okay. Oh, gotcha. I remember this <laughs> right into the, <laughs> okay. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. And then, um, does this this goes i think to weren't we having a conversation about um like blog posts that could be used to kind of represent this larger concept in this case viability does anybody or what was i dreaming this that, that we could have kind of a, a, a representation because we don't really have a method to capture a meta metric model model <laughs> we don't have something um that was a conversation that we had with yahui in the metrics model meeting because he's doing something similar where he has sort of a a bigger model mm -hmm. that's actually several or several related metrics models that he was writing a blog post for the kind of okay. the so we have a, a couple here that are doing the same thing okay um okay well i mean if 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 we are comfortable and you're comfortable, Gary, as the author of these and you feel like you've received enough feedback and it's positive, really our our paths to publishing metrics models is typically lower because the intention is to get them out there and to get the right. conversation started. So I think the next step would be to Elizabeth to move these into the metrics model world into the website i think i need to track them there are a few things that need to be done yeah are they in the spreadsheet that was that was that was one of the things so add to the spreadsheet um yeah sophia maybe this is just like reviewing the models again i know i, I saw this a while ago gary when you brought it to the ospo working group um but I just noticed that in some of the metrics model definitions, there's some reuse of metrics across the four categories. And if you're releasing it as like a super model, then that might be a little confusing to some to have that redundancy. And so not to say that those aren't important for how you've grouped them and like understand conceptually why you would have say something like Libyars listed in multiple categories, but that might be something that you cover sort of in the super model. <laughs> around acknowledging the redundancy and maybe the way that it's grouped or organized in the presentation can help 
the reader acknowledge that there is some overlap. I feel like in, in a perfect world, there would be a complete exclusivity across all the metrics used in a, in a related model. Um, right. But knowing that someone might pick one of these and not all of them, then that, that there's reason then to repeat. I just think that it's like a very small logistical thing that you might be able to cover in just the way that it's presented and organized versus how it is right now where it's kind of folded in. Yeah, that makes sense. I think um, I appreciated the comment that Ihui is doing something similar and then summarized in a blog post to make it more clear how those things fit together. Uh, the overlap is definitely something I've, I've heard and gotten that feedback that like, why do they have to overlap? And it's it's because you might decide that this is the most important thing or you want to score it based on how well governed it is versus how well the strategy aligns because you might not care about the strategy because it's for your company anyway, or whatever. Um, insert scenario here that you only want to use some or none of these. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's something that you could call out either just visually in the way the metrics are defined, like maybe just put the common things at the bottom or something like that and acknowledge that yeah. they're repetitive. And then in the, I, I really like this idea of a blog post because I do think having some way to show all these things connecting and providing a little bit more like context um, that isn't really warranted in a, in a strict definition. So I, I'm basically just reiterating it. I like this path and go forth and conquer. Awesome. And then we talked about uh, with the one who is working on, uh, once that blog post is written and published, we can link that to each of the models in this so that there is some kind of other tie in for people who are just going to that and not might miss the blog post. So we will we'll link that as soon as it's published. Sweet. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can't really write. Uh, I Hold on. I think I understand because we need to have the models published before the blog post can work is what you're saying, right? Yes. And then we'll go back and put under references of each of those models a link to your blog post. Got Assuming yep. you're doing that, Gary. <laughs> Are you writing yeah, that? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. No, actually, could you write it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Nope. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the next step, I'll add these to the spreadsheet. Elizabeth had a good idea in the um, in the chat, which was to, we could, these could be tied together. We use keywords for our metrics models, and we could just have a keyword that is like project viability. Sure. So if somebody searches on that. And I'll do that, not a problem. And then Elizabeth, we can get those keywords added to these, also not a problem. Um, as they get, we don't put them in here, but as they get published. Um, Elizabeth, you would then publish on the spread on the spreadsheet on the website. Is that right? Um, what What do you mean? Well, I'd add them to the spreadsheet. Yes. Settle, settle on the keywords and then you will publish them on the website as I'm just trying, is this an order of events? Correct. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I can do it if you're not finished, but yeah, just to be official, we'll follow the train of. Okay. Yeah. And then Gary, it's just waiting for Elizabeth and then writing a small blog post and just um, mechanically, I think Elizabeth, tell me if I'm wrong, but this can just be written in Google Docs and then just share the link with Elizabeth and it can be published as a blog post. So there's nothing difficult about it. Yeah, and then we'll create uh, an account for you, Gary, on our WordPress. You won't have to even touch it. Uh, we'll just create an account for you and it'll publish under your name, so. Cool. I have a preferred photo. I'll send it along or it awesome. to a Google Doc or whatever. Perfect. All right, um, any questions for Gary, anybody with respect to this? All right, good. Gary, I'll just finish this out here, if that's OK. Please do. <laughs> it's really not a problem. <laughs> so uh, the last thing that on our agenda that had come up last time was, remember this thing? So we were we were tasked with, I don't know. All right, Gary, you talk. I have a dog barking in the back, so hold on. All right. I don't know that Gary knows about this one anyway. 
Oh, well, I was I was just quickly handing it over to somebody. Well, my <laughs> dog was barking. Oh, okay. back. And Gary, I was just looking at you. So, <laughs> all right, I, I'm back. I, I thought back. you were saying my dog was barking, and I'm like, no, Gary, Gary, take she's... over. <laughs> okay. Gary, take the wheel. But no. all right, I'm taking I'm taking the wheel. I'm taking the wheel now. <laughs> um, so I am not familiar with this, but this appears to be self uh, merge and merge without review rates. Um, another model that we are uh, looking at. There's plenty of comments still left on this document um so uh it might be related to the change request reviews metric it seems like we're bringing it up as kind of does this fit uh neatly alongside change request reviews is this complementary in some way has anybody had a chance to uh look at it or maybe we can take a couple minutes here and, and contemplate out loud Thank you. <laughs> this almost feels like self merger. It feels like a special case to, case of the change request reviews, right? Like it's, um, you know, it's 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 me creating a PR, nobody else reviewing it, and me merging my own own PR, which is um, sort of a change request with with zero reviews. Right. So it seems like if you go back. Matt to the um, yeah so see the question number two being merged without review so that is that the piece that you're saying might relate to the change request review metric. Well, I think I think the whole thing is related to the change request metric because it's um, it's basically. Either either case of this one or two is is a case of a change request or sorry, a change request um, being merged with zero reviews. So it's a change request review of zero. Because if someone else merges my PR, then it would have a change request review of one because you'd assume that that merge was, was a review. That's just my, my, my take on it. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that's worth pulling apart is that this is definitely a subset of change request reviews in the way that it doesn't have a review. Um, and then even further, you can dice it up as I've merged it myself without it being reviewed. Because you can do a self-merge when it was reviewed, or you can do a merge where it wasn't you that merged it, but it was reviewed. It wasn't reviewed. You know what I mean? Like this is actually starting to splinter into um, self-merge and merge without review is itself at least four categories of metric um, because you could have it go so many different ways. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, I, I in other communities, um, we've occasionally talked about a metric, gotten consensus, not a metric, sorry, a PR, talked about a PR, gotten consensus on merging the PR, and then the person who created it just went ahead and merged it because we talked about it in a meeting, we had consensus. So it had reviews by a bunch of people but um you know it doesn't really look like it and get home and it looks like right. it's all so i think you're right I mean, there, are, there are a bunch of use cases and i think it's i don't know i think it's important that i really want to bury it in, you know underneath like the change request reviews because i feel like this is it is sort of a special case of it maybe but it's it feels a little bit different to me anyways i have two thoughts one it's very much dependent on community size like if you don't have anybody else working with you then like this metric won't mean anything because clearly you're going to be merging all your own stuff but as your community get larger then it's also an indicator in the security best practices batch in the open ssf um and that we want more things to be reviewed because it's generally a better practice to have someone else look at the thing you're about to put into the code base so it's usually an indicator of better security practices or just general development better practice um, to have other people review your code. So I think it's also an, an indicator of community maturity if there is a process that ensures that everything is being reviewed before it's being merged. Um, so I, I, I generally think it's, it's, it's a metric that's used in other things already because I say like the best practice is bad. Um, but I would again like caveat it with it depends on community size because you only have a couple a handful of folks in the community or project then not everything is going to get reviewed just because of functionality. 
Yeah. I, I think that these things are super important to observe in communities because you can make a lot of decisions and understand a lot of it about a community based on if they have this codified in their practices or not. Um, I do think that self-merge and merge without review are distinct enough that at least those two should be separated. That's just my two cents. Yeah, and I feel like this, so so this is a metric that we've talked about. I don't know if it was talked about while I was off in July, but we talked about it a lot in a couple of different meetings, I think, before before that. Um, and I feel like we, we've gotten to the point where we uh, almost continue to talk ourselves in circles around this metric and not actually coming to any consensus about what we should do with it. Um, so it feels like maybe we should pick something, make a decision. It's not going to be perfect. Um, you know, do we do we split it into two? Do we, um, you know, make it a subset of something else? But I think I think at some point we just need to kind of make a decision so that this metric can actually proceed because I I feel like this is something that's been waiting on a decision for quite a long time. Agreed. My uh, thoughts on that is that it should proceed. There does seem to be enough conversation that it is of interest to people in these different contexts. And there certainly are like some of these caveats associated with it, like community size. And as you talked about, Don, like the self-merges that can happen based on in-person reviews that we don't see in the PR itself. Um, but these these are two of loads of our metrics, right? Yeah. Like there are lots of our metrics that don't make sense um, for a community of, of one, for example. So mm -hmm. I don't want that to, to hold us, things like that to hold us up. And it sounds like this metric that's currently published doesn't necessarily address the concern that comes with self-merge rates or the concerns that can come from self-merge rates or merges without reviews. Yeah, I think they should link to each other as related metrics. Okay. Um, in that case, why don't I'll take the action item to go through and kind of clean this up. And then with the intention of bringing it back to this group in two weeks in kind of more of a final process. And I'll, I'll try to address some of these, these concerns without like going over the edge, like, you know, like this metric may not be useful here and it may not be useful there. Cause as you say, Don, a lot of our metrics are not useful in all situations. And that would be kind of a weird <laughs> addition to add to our metrics. So let me let me take it on as an action item to clean it up, uh, bring it here probably one last time and with the intention of signing off on it and publishing it. How does that sound? Okay, was there any, um, based on the notes, the minutes, what has been written here? Was there anything else that people wanted to add that might want to be considered in this metric, like you know, cross-linking? And I could actually go into this metric as well and do a PR that says there is a special case of this that is. And so you, if you want to dig into that, and there's another metric we have here. So, but cross-linking between them. Is there anything else that you think that's not kind of listed here? Community size matters, self-merge rates can happen. I, I think those are okay to add up in the early description. Do, does anybody have this? Is this a- Honestly, uh, the, the point that I said about like self-merge can happen based on in-person reviews, I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually add that to the metric. That's just- Okay. Of, of things I've seen happen. I don't think it's important enough to add to the metric. So it's a rare one-off case. Okay. okay. Um, does this... Can we... Wait, just to Go ahead. clarify? Yeah. So I, I feel like there's, there's the two separate points of self-merge and merge without review. Acknowledging that they could be the same, but also could be different. Let's say it again. So merge without review versus self merge, or They're like different. are we are we, yeah. So are are they going to be lumped together in this one metric, or are we going to separate them out? 
I would focus this metric on self merge because oh. uh, um, a merge without review is probably a self merge. It's probably a special case of a self merge. Just um, it's just a self merge with zero reviews. Maybe it's a filter. Yeah, I, I don't feel strongly enough that merge without review happens so frequently that it has to be tracked. Um, if this is a metric you want to bring up, then I, I think that merge without review can wait for another time if it becomes relevant. I do like that better because it, I don't, I feel like we were kind of having two metrics in one metric and it'll just focus it. Okay. So just that, correct? What I would do. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, oh, I was. Does can I? Is this possible to see in OpenSSF the fact that this metric does exist? Is there any way I can reference it? Is I guess what I'm asking directly, or just say OpenSSF uses this as well. Do a quick search. It actually isn't in it. The other one was in it. It's the merge without review that's in oh. the OpenSSF. Okay. It says the, the metric is at least 50% of all modifications are reviewed by another. Is part of the, the metric to achieve gold status that's in it. the security best practices badge. So it's it's the, the filtered metric, not the direct metric. So self-merge would actually be distinct. But if we do talk about merge without review in the same place, um, it's, I just linked the, the GitHub repo for that Thank description. You. In the chat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Would that then go back to the change request review metric? Because that change request review is, is like what percent? I think that makes sense to me, Elizabeth, in which case this is a, another linkage. Okay, oops, great. All right, well, I'll, I'll do my best to take all these things and bring them together in the, across these two different metrics, but this is really helpful, thank you. All right. Great, a lot of white space right there. We're done. <laughs> I was really hoping that you were gonna use yet another toy analogy. We had both Cabbage Patch and Build-A-Bear and then, but your no, analogy was, was like make a cake, but Sean like- was making, cake. that was Sean making those, not me. <laughs> I got nothing for you. <laughs> Come on, Sean, where's the Lego? Come on, we got it. You can fit that in here somewhere. I got nothing. Oh, we lost Sean. Sean's not here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks for coming, everybody. It's very great to see everybody and great to see um, new, new, new people as well. So thanks for coming. Have a Bye. great day for the rest of your day. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Have a good Bye. one. Bye, everyone. Bye.